Hi, I'm Jason West, and this is the One Moment Longer podcast with Greg Bennett. Any questions? Welcome to the One Moment Longer podcast presented by Any Question. I'm your host, Greg Bennett. And this was a really fantastic conversation, getting to know one of the real rising stars of the world of triathlon with Jason West. What I was impressed about this conversation is just how Jason is so calm. He's very present with what he's doing. He understands the importance of both the physical, the mental, and of course, the emotional aspects of the world of trying to become the greatest athlete that he can be, which I believe personally can take him to number one in the world. Uh, if you've watched his season in 2023 and you've watched the way he raced, he's mitigated his weaknesses and he's doubling down on his strengths. And I think that's a combination for incredible success going forward. But this was a really great episode. I hope you enjoy it. And remember, success comes to those who endure just one moment longer. All right. Today's guest is a rising star in the triathlon world. His 2023 season has just kicked off with such a bang. He's currently ranked number 12 in the world. And now he started his journey as a 16-year-old and he's steadily raced through his academic years and beyond and has notched up victories all throughout his career and, and has really made a big impact in the sport. But this journey of his has just seen him climb the ranks steadily on the professional triathlon rankings from 76th in 2020. 41st in 2021, 23rd in 2022, and as I mentioned, he's now ranked 12th in 2023. And if this progression continues, I've been doing the math here, if this, <laughs> if this continues at this rate, he'll be 7th in 2024, 4th in 25th, in 25, second in 2026 and number one in the world in 27. If this math continues, that's how it looks. But anyway, he shifted his attention from short course racing to what we'd call middle distance racing and Honestly, this man has his, set, his eyes set on, on 70.3 World Championship, you know, the world title. And, man, I think it's within his grasp. And um, it's just been really exciting to watch him race. So welcome to the One Moment Longer podcast, Jason West. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, mate. Well, like I said, congrats on this year, mate. You've um, This year you've won in Miami. You've won St. Anthony's. You won the Miami Clash and then the St. Anthony's Triathlon. Florida's been good for you, really good to you. Um, cool. Second in Oceanside and fifth cool. at the big race, the European PTO, um, where – all the big guns are racing and you really had an outstanding performance there. It really has been a, a great start to the year. You know, tell me a bit more about these races and how you feel about things. Yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, just having some time to like think back on the year so far. Um, it's, it's been just like so amazing. Um, you know, like every race I've gone out and done something that I felt like was on a different level than what I had done in the past. Um, so not only to like do that, but to consistently do it is just like, that's such a special thing, like to be able to go out and perform and like regularly, it's, you know, it's not easy to get it right. So to continue to get it right over and over is, uh, mm. yeah, it's just a really special thing. And it just, um, just shows like all the hard work I'm putting in and all the things I'm doing, like, we're trending in the right direction and we're, we're continuing to get better. And, um, yeah, like it's, it's just been, uh, uh, really incredible. And I think this year has kind of been the time where I'm like, okay, I really do belong racing with these top guys at the front. Well, mate, yeah, it's amazing when you, you get that confidence, how the mental side of sport changes in your favor as well right it's one thing it's kind of like you've probably had the physical there but now that mental confidence is starting to click into gear and you're not as afraid to give things a go you become less fe fearful have you found that yeah definitely i mean when you're lining up on the start line and it's your intention to be at the front like you race more aggressively you know you're you're much less concerned about moves that maybe your competitors are making because you're like hey I'm, I'm ready to go with it you know you're not afraid to you know put in an aggressive move that to drop some people things like that i mean it just like totally changes your performance 
when you go into it with different intentions, like you don't want to just be out there and see how you do. You really want to be at the front, be a player in the race, um, affect the race, maybe change how other people want to race because they have to think about you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's just such a massive piece of performance. I mean, I've really taken a lot harder look this year at just where my mindset is, um, in a lot of areas. So confidence is one, but there's just another, you know, we can open up a whole box of like mental skills and all the things that you need and that are required to race at a high level. And your mind is just so, so important there. And I think it's something that people probably don't spend enough time on just because I've, I've seen so many athletes who maybe have all the physical skills in training and they can do all the things. And I'm sure you, you know, I'm sure you've seen that through your time and trained with enough people where you're like, this athlete should probably be at the front, mm -hmm. but maybe the mental skills aren't there. And it's like, how can your mind simply make a 10 minute difference in a middle distance race? And it, it absolutely can. Mm. So yeah, it's like, I've taken a huge mental approach this year and I think it's, uh, it's definitely paying off. Are you doing anything specific or are you working with anybody? I mean, I, these, this conversation alone, I could spend hours with you. <laughs> it's one of my deep passions or has it just been something that you just sort of recognizing? I think a lot of it boils down to like mindfulness, mm -hmm. like knowing where your mind is at and when, and maybe how to manipulate it to get it to the right place. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm not into meditation or any of that kind of stuff, but simply just being mindful. If you're, you know, out on a ride and you're not listening to music and you're just sitting with your thoughts and knowing how to like get your mind in a place to perform and, and where that is like some people, they need to get super jacked up and intense and that's where they perform the best. And for some people they need to be super calm. Mm -hmm. And how do you get your mind in a place that you need to be? Like I've found I need to be quite calm and centered. And when I am in that state, like way, way better I perform. You know, like I spent a lot of years in the ITU not figuring out the swim, <laughs> mostly because I don't think I could get my mind or I knew where to put my mind in the right place on that start line. Like I always had all this anxiety about how intense it was going to be and how people were going to be punching me in the face. And mm. I thought I needed to get like all worked up. And I think it was probably actually counterproductive. So yeah, it's just, I think like being mindful of where you're at and when, um, is just super important. Like knowing if, whether you're being present or not and knowing how to eliminate distractions or different thoughts that come up, um, how to be really, really focused in the moment. Yeah. It's just, just something I think about more you know, if I do a session and it, it wasn't great and I was just, you know, my head wasn't there. I'm like, well, how do I get my, my mind in the right place? And that's going to like, just make me have a much better session. Like you can go in with the same physical skills that day and come out with a wildly different outcome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I mean, like you said, it, it's like something we could talk about for hours and I really love it. Cause it's just, it can make such a huge difference. And I don't think it's like something people look at as much. I think there's almost like a stigma that if you struggle with that kind of stuff, that you're just like, kind of like a wimp, you know what I mean? Like there's almost, if you need to work on your fitness, it's like, Hey, we're all open about let's do this or that. But it's like, people never really want to say, Hey, I need to work on my mind because it's almost like uh, a sign of weakness, I feel like, in sport. And people almost kind of look down on it. But I think you really, we should be spending almost just as much time just trying to like think about how to get our minds right and how to perform. Because, um, yeah, it just makes such a big difference. And it's uh, a really challenging part of elite-level sport, for sure. Well said, mate. I um, 
I've said it on this show numerous times, you know, it was a quote that uh, Dr. Tommy Wood said and, and I, we were having this kind of conversation and, and I said, you know, you know, what do you think about visualizing in the mind and, and, what, and its impacts? And he said, Greg, w- w- what you think about has a direct impact on your physiology, right? And, and when you think positive, is going to have an effect on your on your body a certain way. You think negative thoughts are going to have a actual chemical release. Hormones are going to change. Everything's going to change. And so, when you mentioned being present, being aware, having mindfulness, it's like just owning who you are at any given moment, right? And and the impact of that. I'm not saying somebody has to be positive and happy all the time. That's actually it's nice when it happens, but it's more about just being present and getting yourself to neutral. And if you're anxious or, you know, nervous about certain things, it's like, try and just get yourself in a calm place. I love how you say that. It's like, that's the kind of person I am. So get myself to a calm place. This year, with your your couple of big wins, a 107 in Oceanside, mate, off the bike. (laughs) I mean, this year, having those couple of wins, the second at Oceanside, the fifth at the PTO European Chair, are you finding getting into that mindful space becoming easier because of that success? I mean, I think when you look at yourself as, hey, I, I like belong here and I, I don't want to say it's like a cocky feeling of, hey, I, I know I can win this race, but there is a confidence that goes along with like, hey, I've performed mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I know if I just go out and I do my thing, like really good things are going to happen. I, l- I like that. And you have to have that mindset. Like, I mean, if you're on the start line and you don't think you're the best, like you're probably not going to win is the reality of it. And there's a way to, to kind of be an asshole about that. And there's a way to have an inner confidence about it and respect your competitors and, but still feel like, Hey, this is my race. Like I'm a little bit more relaxed because it's just like when you go out and you you prove to yourself where your abilities are time and time again, it, it almost makes it easier and easier to do it again in the future because you don't feel like you need to have some sort of race day magic or something where you come up with something that is beyond what you've shown yourself. You're just like, Hey, I just, I know that I can go out and show what I've, what I've built in training and, and what I can do. And yeah, there's definitely like, a sense of calm and relaxation with that. For me, who I'm somebody who's just like has a super calm presence most of the time. Yeah. Like it just definitely like continues to spiral to allow me to like, just be me and put myself in a a position to have success. Yeah. Even the way you speak feels calming. (laughs) <laughs> it's like having you on the show. I feel calm. I feel at ease. I love the quote and I've just written it down. If I just do my thing, really good things are going to happen. It's like a, it's simplistic, but it's kind of like, just go out there and do what you know what to do and good things will come. Have you just had a break? Cause you know, you've had those big events to start the year. Are you on a break or have you just had a break? Yeah, I took uh, the week after Ibiza, I took off. I worked out for like, you know, 30 minutes, a couple of the days, um, <laughs> just because like, I just feel better when I sweat a little bit. Yeah, I think of course. like, you know, I'm a better person when I exercise. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd like, I don't know. I don't necessarily like to just lie on the couch all day. Like that's maybe not as therapeutic as a little bit of exercise, but certainly nothing structured or nothing planned. When you start that early, like in March, I think you have to plan Mm -hmm. breaks. And I think in the past, I've made the mistake of trying to hold form too long and Mm -hmm. just in this constant sharpening routine where it's like I'm trying to be in really good shape all the time. And eventually you fall off the cliff and it usually happens in like July. Yeah this time. And, and then it's, it's a really difficult fight back. Um, but yeah, this year, I think we, we did a good job planning a break there and, um, yeah, it was just, just refreshing and got to relax. And Are you in Boulder? Sorry, I didn't ask you. Are you in Boulder at the moment? Did you have your break in Boulder too? Are you in, up in Boulder? Yeah, in Boulder. Just uh, came back came back home. Yeah, I definitely like to, to be at home and in, in, in my environment and uh, mm. relaxing and stuff. So 
it was a, a good break. And I think since we took it at the right time, I was able to hop back into training this week and it feels like I'm just picking up where I left off, Nice, which is a really good feeling. Cause when you go too long and you fall off the cliff and then you take a break, you work back in and it's like, you almost feel like you're starting over again. Yeah. You don't want to break too long, but you need to yeah. break fresh in the mind and body and the emotions a little bit. I went on your Strava and it was really cool. And, and the reason to be honest, I never go on Strava. I have a Strava to test my little 5k runs I do every now and then, but I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go in here and, and being that you're in Boulder. And I loved seeing some of the the runs and bikes you're doing because they, they just brought back so many memories for me training in the mountains there and the, you know, the South St. Rain up to Ward. And um, it was just cool to see you doing those kind of rides. And and I must admit, I was thinking, oh, he's, he's going to be as strong as an ox doing that kind of riding. So it was, it was fun to go on there and see what you've been up to these last couple of days or this week. Um, and you're back into it, mate. I mean, it's, uh, you're back and going. What, what's your next event you got coming up? Uh, I got Escape from Alcatraz coming up, just trying to do, you know, some base training and just do like kind of that initial block of the second cycle. And okay. it's, it's, a race that like I just love and I really enjoy it. Like there's no experience like it. It's like just such an interesting race. And yeah, I love it. It's such a cool race. I would love to win it. I I'm very, like I've been second or third, like every time. And I'm just like, <laughs> this is the good time I'm going. And yeah, um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just such a fun race and a little bit shorter. And, uh, I figured it would be a good one to kind of like have some fun and, put a little bit less stress on it and, uh, you know, just see what happens. Uh, just use it as a, a piece in the puzzle building up for the next big ones. Uh, the questions I enjoy sort of asking is, you know, when, when did you find your passion for endurance sports and, and specifically triathlon? Yeah. I, uh, man, I always chuckle a lot when I think back of like the early times in triathlon and I'm sure you'll start chuckling too when I get into it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I actually, I was growing up, I did a lot of sports. Um, but I, I mainly, I was a wrestler and I did that for wow. about 10 years. Wow. Um, yeah. So my dad was a wrestler his, a lot of his family was into wrestling. Um, no endurance sports background in my family at all. And, uh, yeah, so I did that. And then I got into, I was getting into high school about the time where if you really want to be good at something, you kind of start committing a bit more to it. And the time commitment at that point, I just like, just wasn't my heart, I guess just wasn't with it to where I wanted to put in that much time. And I guess that's kind of how, you know, like, are you really passionate about this? Is mm-hmm. like, do you want to get up every day and go the extra mile and doing those extra things? And at that time, you know, I just, just didn't. Um, and I felt like I was then maybe in an area of my life where I was searching for something because mm-hmm. I was always into sports and always in athletics and I wanted to be active every day when I got home from school and like I wanted to be running around and, but I just didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. Um, but one day, I don't know, my, my dad and I just randomly signed up for a triathlon <laughs> and when I was like 16. So he had never done anything like it. I had never done anything like it. Um, and so we did the event. It was like shorter than the sprint distance. It was like a two mile run, a 10 mile bike. And I just remember it being brutally hard. Like <laughs> I felt like I was not prepared and it was like the level of, it was the first day I ever got kicked in the face in the water. And I was like, what in the world is going <laughs> on? But for some reason, it's just like, I just loved it. I, it gave me something to like go out and work really hard at every day. And it was like, I have to get good at all these different sports. And it was just, I was always a super hard worker. So I think it just fit my personality really well. You know, the things I start to laugh about are just the things I was doing for training. And I think it's, it's kind of funny when you're super passionate about something, you look back and you're like, man, I was doing some really stupid stuff. 
but it was because I was so passionate about it. Like I would go out and I would run like five miles or 10 kilometers just all out for time, like three days a week. (laughs) There was no warm up. Like I jogged to the end of the driveway and I was like, (laughs) I was just, every bike ride was a hundred percent, like all out, just going for like record times. And I like, I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I had no like background of endurance sports in my family, nothing like the idea of an easy run just never crossed my mind. <laughs> like, it was just really, really funny. Like I got into college and I was getting pretty good, but I was, you know, like every weekend I would do a 40 K bike and a 10 K run just all out. I love it. I, I actually kind of love it. I kind of, I love that mentality. <laughs> it was just like, you know, looking back, it was so stupid, but it was just like, you know, you, you really loved it and like wanted to get better at it. And I didn't know, I was like, I guess I'll just like work really hard and yeah. push myself and that's how you get better. And, uh, it's amazing how much you learn and how much smarter you get and how it's all evolved. But you know, that, that time as stupid as it might've been, it was like, I learned how to be really tough mm. because I was like putting myself in, in that kind of situation on a daily basis. And that's like, that's kind of racing, you know? So felt like I probably built a lot of mental toughness in that time. Mm. But um, I love it. Did yeah. your dad carry on with you? And, and do you have siblings that, that also got into the triathlon scene or was it, you just went on your own? Um, my dad, he's done like, he did a little bit more triathlon, Um, he's just more into cycling these days. Um, he actually like races on the track and stuff still to this day. And, uh, like he just turned 63 yesterday. Oh, good on him. Yeah. Racing on the track the other day. So, um, so that's really cool. Um, I have three older brothers. None of them are into, you know, like endurance sport, any, anything like that. I have one brother who's into bodybuilding. So totally different Mm -hmm. space, but Mm -hmm. he's super into that. And then, um, yeah, I have another brother. My other two brothers are more into the arts. So one's a guitar player for a living and, uh, the other one's an art teacher. So we're all super, super different, but, uh, just doing what we love. So I love that though. You know, you're all very similar because you're all being raised to find your passion and give it a good crack. You know, I, I love that in your DNA, mate, you've got a bodybuilding. <laughs> DNA. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, what's part of that is a tremendous amount of strength as well. When, when did you decide um, that you thought you had some ability here? Like did, when did you recognize you had some strengths and talents? Yeah. I mean, I definitely, like I, I started improving quite fast. Like I said, when I first started, I, I really wasn't very good at like any of the three sports, but I definitely improved quite quickly. Even like before I had gone to college, you know, I was racing quite competitively at the age group level. And then I got to college and I was competing at, you know, a a pretty high level collegiately. Mm -hmm. And when it was looking like, Hey, you know, maybe you're one of the best athletes in the country on the collegiate level, it was kind of like, Hey, maybe there's like an opportunity here. And my, my parents were super supportive. I mean, I think they saw like that I had the potential, Mm -hmm. you know, they're like, you know, you're trying to be a national champion. Like clearly you're pretty good. Um, and they were, yeah, like they were super supportive of, Hey, like go after this, you know, like go after what you, what you love to do. And if it doesn't work, then so, so be it. Then you go get a job and you know, you live a happy life doing something else, but you might as well go after it while you have the chance. And, uh, yeah, after, after school and I moved out to Boulder with no job and no money and, (laughs) I mean, you, when you talk about it, you say it like that and you look back, it's like, man, that, this is kind of crazy. Yeah, like, it's kind of stupid. What was I thinking? <laughs> I know. What what year was that that you pulled the trigger? And, and uh, like, we, yeah, I graduated in 2015 and yeah, yeah. we drove out straight from there like a couple of days later. So wow. at that point, you know, you know you're, you're young and you don't have much to lose, right? So you just go for it. Yeah. And, and so then you went straight on to with USA triathlon, right. And straight into the, 
the World Triathlon Series and, and, and those events for a little bit? Yeah. I, uh, you know, the ITU was a weird, weird thing. Cause like I, I came up through the age group, like non draft. Right. Just, of course. Yeah. I had no idea there was like junior draft legal racing and like that wasn't even something that was on my radar until I was like aged out of it. Mm. Um, like I didn't even know it really existed. Like I had watched some Olympic triathlons like on TV here and there, but I didn't, didn't really know there was that whole, that whole pathway going on. But as I got into college, I, I kind of started dipping my toes into like the ITU racing. And I actually, I think I had a podium when I was still in school. And at that point it was kind of like, okay, maybe like there's some potential here for you to, to go down this route, um, and have some success. So it was like, it was funny cause that was not something that was ever on my radar right. until I just started trying it. And then, uh, yeah, I think I qualified for the national team there at the end of 2015. So pretty much, uh, yeah, I was fortunate to have some, some early success right yeah. out of college that definitely, uh, definitely helped move me forward. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, even though it wasn't on your radar and, and perhaps, you know, you know, the kind of racing that you're doing now, having that experience, doing some world series races, being challenged in a different format and forcing you to maybe work on the, the swim and, and, and different style of biking. It's just a nice skill set to have. It's part of your education, if you like, of being a professional triathlete. You know, those, they're, they're valuable years, whether they were your world number one or not, they were valuable to, to experience, right? Yeah. I think the ITU forces you to be a complete athlete. Like you could climb your way up through like the long course scene and maybe not be a great swimmer. Yeah. But that's not happening in the ITU. Like (laughs) you need to know how to swim and you need to be technically good on your bike and you need to be able to put out super high power outputs. And like, it was just super dynamic and it required like all the skills to, to be able to have success at it. Hmm. So even if I like long-term said I had success at it or not, like it, it forced me to develop in a lot of those ways. And I'm thankful that I did because even like, if you look at long course racing now, but saw the ITU guys pushing the swim at the front. Yeah. So if you didn't ever really develop that, you know, it's going to be really challenging then now because yeah, it's like long course racing now. I mean, we always, a lot of us joke that these PTO races are basically just long ITU races yeah. <laughs> cuz you know the swim's getting faster and more aggressive and there's a little bit of pot pack dynamics and everybody's pushing the pace super hard and it's just you know that middle distance has evolved so much that yeah I'm just super grateful for all the time I had with the ITU and all the life experience I got with it as well you know when, when you watch like the PTO European Championships and you have Aaron Royal, you know, gunning it <laughs> off the front and Jan Fredino's with him and, and it's just like this incredible feel. Mate, but your swim in itself, I mean, you're right, right there. Like one minute back is I, – I always think if you can be within a minute at something like a PTO, as much as everyone's, oh, you got to be first pack. Within that minute, you're still, you're still sniffing the front. You know, you, the, you're you not out of it. When you're getting out three, four, five minutes, then you're kind of like, yeah, it's going to really yeah. take a monster monster bike run. But you're putting yourself in these, you, you've got to the point that your weaknesses you've really mitigated, you know, and, and to the point they're almost weapons. But then you're laying down this weapon of a, of a run, which... It's just extraordinary when you think you ran, outran, you know, Christian Blumenfeld by a minute and a half at the PTO European Championships. A minute and a half, everybody, in 18K. <laughs> I mean, that's a weapon, but you're mitigating your weaknesses. And I, I just, like I said in the top of the show, mate, it's incredible to watch. If you look back now in 2023, you're still young in your career, you know, what have been some of the standout moments, highlights, great successes that you had, uh, in these last few years? Yeah. I mean, it's the last few years, just trying to figure out long course for me has been a little bit bumpy, you know, I, like it's been up and down and 
do you know the races where like I was really pushed in the swim and the bike and I was able to to get through that really well is always really satisfying because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you said, when you can kind of take a weakness and it's a point of the race where maybe your competitors are like, Hey, we need to get rid of this guy or we're going to put time on him," And then they can't, Mm -hmm. it's just really, really satisfying because of the amount of like hard work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's taken a lot of hard work to get my cycling up to where it needs to be Mm -hmm. in long course racing. And, um, so the days where like, you know, I have a front pack swim and I'm able to ride right with the leaders the whole way. And like, they're, they're actively trying and trying and they're putting in attacks and they can't get rid of me. Like I find incredibly satisfying those days. Um, like when I was able to win North American champs Mm -hmm. last year, that was just such a big day for me. Cause I was like, it just was like flawless from start to That was to Chattanooga, finish. right? Yeah. 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 Like I was able to swim and ride and be right with the leaders. And then like, I'm always confident to go do my thing on the run. And that's been there for a while, but like the better I get at the swim and the bike, it's like all of a sudden that run becomes such of like a weapon to use instead of just me trying to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I love that mate. And I, um, like I said earlier, you know, watching the kind of riding you're doing in, in Colorado, the kind of work you're doing, I personally know how well that's going to translate <laughs> to time trialing, uh, you know, laying down solid bikes in these races. So I think there's only bigger and better things to come. Um, and I think I love the fact that out of all of that, you identified only one race. It was more the the what you're looking for in terms of, feedback from, Mm -hmm. from the training, you know, and and it's like, it wasn't so much about individual races that really stood out to us. Like, no, there's moments in races that I'm getting feedback that I can then take and utilize to become a better athlete. I I think it's a great response. And on on the flip side of it, you know, you've been in the sport now, six, seven years at, at, you know, doing it professionally. Are you, have there been any massive setbacks tough times that you've had to struggle through? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, I qualified for the national team in 2015, if we go all the way back to there. And then at the beginning of 2016, I broke my foot and I was struggling back from that feeling like I had to get back to perform. And then I probably screw up my IT band cause I rushed it back. And that, that whole year, like just almost put me in a retirement. It felt like, and then, you know, I, there were so many struggles along the way. And then when, when COVID hit, it was like, I almost didn't come back to racing after it, to be honest. Um, I remember having a conversation with my wife at the beginning of 2021 and just saying like, I just don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like I'm working so much and I'm training and just trying to make it work and like struggling along for so long, like it wears you down a little bit. And yeah, it was just, to be honest, I was like, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep going. And she was probably the one who really like kept me in the sport and really believed in me and was just, yeah, like we can do this. And, uh, you know, finally like started really breaking through that year. So yeah, like there was just plenty of times where, you know, I, I could have just moved on and, and done something else. And, but I'm, super thankful for all the people that have been around me that have believed in me. Cause now like today I'm, I'm probably loving the sport more than I ever have. And I'm super excited about it. And like, I'm just like, I want to be here for, for so much longer. So yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody you talk to probably has those stories, right? It's like, what this show is all about, right? The show is called one moment longer. And, and, and it comes from the mantra that I always had, which was, you know, success comes to those who endure just one moment longer. And it's that hanging in there and having that support team around you that keep pushing you back in the ring. They keep empowering you. They keep, you know, that they believe in you. So they, a lot of us guys in particular, and I'm talking about my own example of this is, you know, having a strong partner that empowers you to go out to the world and test yourself. It's one of the greatest weapons you really can have. I mean, there's that old expression, isn't it? You know, behind every great man is an, an even greater woman. It sounds like you've got that. 
And now when you look at your performances over these last, you know, 24 months, it's, it's crazy to think back and go, well, I basically almost gave it away. I was, I was saying, <laughs> and then I'm glad I didn't, right? You, you hung in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like my wife is, she's incredible. And just another example in, in Ibiza, I was really sick in the lead up and I didn't know if I was going to race and she stayed up late so I could call her in the morning before on race morning and yeah. just like, just have a five minute chat of like, okay, I think I'm going to do this mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to like have that chat. She, you know, it meant the world to me. And she probably like maybe thought it was, you know, probably something small, but like having a sports system like that, cause you know, I, had I not been able to talk to her and like have her be like, Hey, you can do this. Mm. You know, I, I maybe didn't start that day mm -hmm. and didn't have that incredible performance. So yeah, I mean like, man, like just the place I'm in in life with the support group I have, like, I mean, I, that's so important in trying to keep getting better and performing and keeping you in a, in a positive headspace. Cause this sport is just so bloody hard. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just so hard and you can't, you can't be doing it alone. So yeah, I'm super grateful for just the, the support system I have loved ones, Jess, like my coaches, everybody. It's just, uh, yeah, I'm super blessed. Well, you're also lucky, you know, Jess had her time as a professional triathlete, you know. I mean, so she understands. I think that often helps. You know, Laura will tell you that I retired probably five times a year for 30 years in my career. Like it was just like, and she had to keep pushing me back in because I, I, I think I was my, my biggest weakness, you know, got, in, got myself, got in the way of myself too often. Um, but I love that you've got that team. I think it's fantastic that, you know, they've been able to push you back in. mini break to remind you to go check out any question where we have over 1200 of the world's greatest experts from about 30 different channels they're answering your questions there now and you can listen to 75,000 of their answers that are already there you can search and discover great content so go check it out there's triathletes and endurance athletes all across the board with amazing content there there's healthcare professionals there's military and first responders there's even a pets channel so go check it out. It's free. You can download it on iOS or Android or go to anyquestion.com. Tell me a little bit more about your team that you're, you're working with and, and who, who's, you know, coaching you now or are you coaching yourself? How's that all working for you? I definitely keep like a pretty small circle. Um, I like to keep things simple, easy. So I handle my whole program, I guess, as a whole, like by myself, I kind of piece it all together. My wife actually programs all my swimming because um, she has a great swimming background and swim coaching background. And she's been doing that since probably 2019 or so. Nice. Um, and we've just made tons of progress. And then I last summer brought on Nate Wilson to handle my cycling program. Um, I just felt like I needed somebody who's a real expert in the cycling space to just like, mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to make such big progress. Like as a whole, it wasn't like, Hey, in one area you need to get better. I just needed to develop mm -hmm. as a whole as a cyclist. And Nate is, uh, you know, he works with the EF world tour team. Um, he's working with a bunch of ITU athletes and, uh, so yeah, I brought him on and that, that's been an incredible piece. Um, and we've been just making consistent progress on the bike. So, so that's been super, super helpful. And, uh, yeah, so it's kind of the three of us and I, uh, just trying to put good people around me and yeah. I just yell it all together. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it seems to be working pretty well. Good man. Can, can you give us a bit of an idea of what a, if there is such a thing, a, a typical kind of training week, what it looks like for you, you don't have to get into too specifics, but as much as possible, it'd be great. I'd probably train like, you know, around 30 hours a week, mm -hmm. plus or minus here or there. I'm somebody who we've found probably responds well to a little bit more volume and maintaining my foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I get pretty run down from a bit more intensity. Speed kills, so, mate. Speed kills. <laughs> yeah, so... 
you know, it's like, it's a little bit more strategic the way we, we implement it. And, um, we're doing like a little bit less of the just cranking threshold paces over and over again, that kind of stuff just wears you out so much. But yeah, I mean, I generally like we're doing pretty substantial rides Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I usually have like one run session on Tuesday. That's maybe a little bit longer or to you know, it just depends on what block I'm in. It might be VO2, it might be tempo, whatever. And then Fridays, I'm usually running really quick for 30 or 60 second pieces Mm -hmm. and a bunch of those just to get the mechanics more, more than anything. Mm -hmm. And then I swim, you know, usually about five days a week and hard, probably like twice. So yeah, it's, it's a bit higher volume and we're being a little bit more careful with intensity and, uh, we're actually right now trying a little bit of a higher bike block than I've ever done before. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's exciting to be doing something a little bit new and different. It's a solid, it's a solid program. And, you know, I think everybody's nodding their head listening to this saying, yeah, you know, let's, let's live in that. I used to call it best easy pace. So it didn't mean slow. It just meant, you know, moving effortlessly. Um, and my goal was always trying to make that pace faster. Um, and it's living in, I guess you'd call it zone two. Most people do these days. And I think there's a lot to come out of that. So very cool. I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit because I'm, I'm conscious of the time and, and, and your training and recovery, but I want to, I want to shift gears into a, a section I call opinions. I want to get your opinions uh, on the prevalence of performance enhancing drugs in triathlon mm-hmm. and your thoughts on how prevalent do you think it is or do you think the sport is in a pretty good place? I would, I, I do think the sport's in a really good place. I think if you don't think there's cheating going on, you're, I don't know, naive, right? Mm. There's, there's probably always going to be cheating going on, whether it's performance enhancing drugs, whether it's there's certain athletes that have been known to try to find places to cut the course or <laughs> stupid things like that. So I think there's always going to be cheating going on, unfortunately. And the more money that comes into it, the more I think we need to be trying to test and things like that to find it because there's more incentive to cheat then. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it's like happening that much. I just, I always look at it like I'm just way too competitive for all these guys for there to be like a bunch of guys taking drugs. I like you know? that. <laughs> just, I'm just like, it, I feel like if everybody was taking drugs, I would just be getting my ass kicked yeah. and like, I just wouldn't be anywhere near the front. And so I just like, I don't really think that it's happening that much. I mean, obviously with, with what happened recently with Colin, it just, obviously everybody's thinking about it. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. But I, like, it's funny on, on a daily basis. Like I really don't think about it. Like yeah. it just doesn't really cross my mind. And and I think it's, it just comes down to what a lot of people have said is like, if it's all about winning races, then you're, you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. And for me, it's like, I want to get as good as I can get and push myself and really like have to battle out there and, and like see what I can do. And if that means I come in sixth, then I come in sixth. And if it means I win races, then great. But the days where you like pulled absolutely everything out of yourself, those are the days that are that you're gonna remember one day when you retire and you look back. And mm-hmm. you know, I just I don't know. I I don't think about it that much. And I also have the belief that if I'm shoulder to shoulder with somebody who's taking drugs down the stretch of a race, then I'm going to win every time because in order to take drugs, you have to basically admit to yourself that you're inadequate and that you don't think that you can win the right way. So I think like we get talking about the mind again. And if you take somebody who's, basically doesn't believe that they're good enough. So they have to cheat. Like how much are they going to quit in their mind down the stretch? Whereas I believe in myself, I believe I can do it. Like I'm going to push myself as hard as I can, like whatever they're gaining physiologically, they're probably losing psycho psychologically like tenfold, you know, because 
yeah, I just think in order to cheat, you have to kind of already accept that you don't think you're good enough. So to me, it's not something I really think about. I'm sure as time goes on, like there's going to be people that get caught and hopefully they're out of the sport forever and you know, you move Mm -hmm. forward, but it's just like not something I spend too much time thinking about. And at least like what I want to get out of the sport, it just doesn't like, doesn't affect it that much. You know what I mean? Cause I I could get really pissed off about, Oh, that guy beat me. But it's like at the end of the day, like winning the race wasn't necessarily the most important thing. Well said, mate. Well, well said. And I, I love uh, the way you describe it being down the straight and if they've taken drugs, you know, they're they're basically inadequate. I I think that's very well said. Um, And look, it's not something that I think anybody wants to think about terribly much. I think it's okay um, to have a little bit of healthy skepticism when you see things you know, you're like, what? <laughs> like, but I also think you, you said it right in the sense of, well, hang on, if I can be up the front of these races, I may not be winning, but I'm in the game and I'm not doing it. It, it kind of makes you think, well, how I, I was exactly the same through my whole career. It was kind of like, well, hang on, if I'm up here, I don't think others must be doing it. And I know Crowey's a good mate of mine and Simon Whitfield and other people are, and I, I don't think they're doing anything. So yeah. no, very cool. All right, mate. Well, ne- ne- next opinion question. Who's who do you consider the greatest triathlete you've ever witnessed in the sport? Oh man. It's tough. Like like so many people consider Jan the greatest, right? But I've only raced Jan once. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think <laughs> as an athlete, you're always like looking who you've raced, right? And it was like, okay, I raced Jan once and like obviously he's done these incredible performances, but not being there. And I think it makes it hard to like understand it maybe, or I think you maybe have a bias because you're like, you didn't experience it. Like Alistair's done just ridiculous things, but it's like, I I don't know. I wasn't there. Like, what was it like? Um, (laughs) So it's just like, I've always been really impressed, impressed with what Vince was doing when he, he, he had his run kind of through, I don't know, 2020, 2021, like 2019. Did he win worlds in 2019? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Vincent Louis. Yeah. He was in a place where he was like, it seemed like he was unbeatable. It was like, he was the best swimmer, cyclist and runner in the field. And I was like, man, like his skill set's incredible. And obviously that's like, you know, we're looking at ITU racing there. And like I said, Alistair, like some of the things he's done in the ITU, just, just ridiculous, man, it's tough. And then I don't know, it's hard to like, look back at the greats of long course racing. Cause like I said, it was like, it was so before my time. Before you were born, mate. (laughs) I know that it's like, it's, you look back at it and it's also like a super different era where they don't have like the crazy bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like so hard to evaluate, you know. And And that's why it's just an opinion piece. There's no right or wrong. It's, um, you know, it's fun. For me, it's just a bit of fun, honestly. It's a bit of banter. Um, You know, my childhood hero was Mark Allen and and Dave Scott, but Mark Allen. And so, you know, I had Cam Brown on the show and we were both like, yeah, Mark Allen, you know, but but we're also old men. And that's, (laughs) you know, he was was on our posters on the wall. And, and that kind of thing. But I certainly don't cheapen Alistair and Jan Fadino or even what the Norwegians are doing now is like kind of going, holy crap. You know, Vincent Lewis, like you mentioned, I just love the guy. I love his story and I love the way he dominated. So yeah, a fun opinion piece, but <laughs> all right. I want to finish up with the big four questions, mate. You don't have to go terribly far back for this one, but if you were to go back and give your 16 year old self some advice, what would it be? Oh man, I would say just like, uh, probably just relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I think at that time I found a, a, I had a, a, I did a really good job like finding triathlon and being passionate about it and getting into it. I think when I got into it though, I almost like felt like every race was so important Mm -hmm. and it's like, man, like think about how not important some of those events were (laughs) now. And it's like, you just got to like relax a little bit more, like have a, have a bit of more of a big picture outlook on things. Um, and not think like, you know, this, 
this moment you're in is like the end all be all of the world. So, um, yeah, I, I would say just, just relax and take it in and like, you know, think long term a little bit more. If you could have dinner with three people, non family, living or dead, who would they be and why? I, re- I would really like to meet Elliot Kipchoge. Yeah. I think he's just like, like his mindset towards everything and the way he goes about it all is just super inspiring. Um, I think, let's see, Steve Prefontaine would be cool. Wow, they're very cool. Yeah. Just the way that the fire that guy had and like he was just an absolute killer and was willing to like take all the risk mm-hmm. all the time and that takes a special kind of person. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, the third, it would probably have to be somebody out of sport, you know, it's just <laughs> mix things up a little bit. Yeah. Dealt with, dealt with something, you know, yeah, something more challenging in like real life. You know what I mean? I'll put a, how about a uh, Shackleton, Ernest Shackleton, you know him? No. Oh, go read the book Endurance. Okay. Um, and uh, what they did down the South Pole and how they stayed alive. Very cool. I just think it'd be a fun dinner time conversation. So I'm going to throw him in there for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Where do you see yourself in, in five years? I think my introduction pretty much nailed it, but let's hear it from you. What do you see? Oh, five years. I don't, I mean, hopefully just uh, not, not in a real different place, to be honest. Mate, I want to hear crushing it. World number one, dominating. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't even know, like, where I would be in the sport of triathlon wasn't even. That's not what I'm, you thought about. <laughs> It was more just like, you know, here and we want to, we want to start a family and oh, just mate, I love it. living life here and yeah. together with my family and enjoying it. Like, you know, that's, that's my, my biggest priority. And I like to keep things pretty simple and I want to live a simple life. And I, I find a lot of, a lot of joy in that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. And Hey, if I can, rise to the top of the sport and win world titles and stuff. That's, you know, that's great. But, um, there's, there's more important things than sport. That's for sure. Mate, you're making me feel like a dick now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, number one, that's all that matters. No, Greg, get some perspective, brother. (laughs) Oh man, he's right. I love it. Uh, but a great answer on that one. Um, all right. I want to finish actually with some rapid fire questions. Are you up for it? You got any, um, Fast twitch fibers left. How are we doing here? Aha. Yeah, let's let's go for All it. All right. I've made up some different ones today. These are going to be um, throw you for a loop. Here we go. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Uh, probably a horse-sized duck. <laughs> Me too. All right. First job. Oh, first job? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts. Did you really? <laughs> Love it. Yeah. For like two years. Oh, good man. All right. You've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What would you do with it? Um, I don't know. I'll just walk around the neighborhood and give <laughs> elephant rides to all the kids, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. I use chat GPT to help me out with some of these and it's hilarious. Can vegetarians eat animal crackers? Um, yeah, there's, there's no real substance in those. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Would you rather always be 10 minutes late or always be 20 minutes early? Uh, 20 minutes early. Mm -hmm. If you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? Forrest Gump. Yeah. Great. Good choice. If your bike could talk, what would it say about you? I don't know that my butt smells really bad. (laughs) (laughs) Get off me. Get off me. Jesus. (laughs) I love it. Um, Here we go. Um, If you could have unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? I don't know. Maybe my favorite coffee beans. (laughs) (laughs) And maybe a way to brew them. (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right. And, and because you're so into music, what decade of music is best? Uh, I'm in like 80s. Good man. Yeah. Great answer. All right. Well, this will make this back. Let's retrack. You have one, have to sing one karaoke song. What song do you pick? There's got to be something. Come on, Eileen. <sighs> Gee, there's so many great 80s songs. I just, I'm just picking them for you now. Yeah. 
you know, I'd always, I know, because I was more into like the classic rock era and it's just not like karaoke at all. <laughs> Very true. Well, we'll leave, we'll leave that, mate. Well, so what's next for you? You got, um, you got Alcatraz coming up. Let's talk about this. You, you, the rest of the season, what's, what's, uh, what's the focus here? Yeah. So after Alcatraz, I'm basically just training for like two months. Um, right. right. We have like this crazy month of racing in August yeah. with, two PTO tour races and 70.3 worlds. So I kind of decided like, Hey, if, if I'm going to go after all of that, like I'm not going to race for a while before it, um, just set aside some time to, to really train and build a huge foundation and try to have success at those three. Nice. Um, so yeah, my mind's on like August for the most part, mm. um, trying to, to race those PTO tour races and 70.3 worlds. Um, it's kind of where all my big goals are there in those three races. And then after that, to be honest, like I'm not hundred percent sure just because that's pretty much. That's mostly- pretty big, mate. It's pretty big. Yeah, after that, it's like, you yeah. know, the all big races of the year are, are kind of done for me and yeah. just, uh, trying to find what fires me up maybe towards the end of the year, what I actually like am motivated to go and, and do. And, uh, yeah, I don't, to be honest, know what that is yet, but. That's all right. That's all right. You, you got your eye on the prize for August, which is going to be an outstanding month, like you said. And um, I think, you know, you're in the right headspace. But I, I, honestly, mate, I've thoroughly enjoyed connecting and having this chat with you and getting to know you a little bit better. So I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your journey and just, and, and your passion. Um, and, and I love the fact that, Jess helped keep you in the ring that we've been able to watch you perform like you are and I for one believe big things are in front of you um I'm a big fan of what you're doing so thanks for coming on and and just uh keep chasing your dream mate it's been impressive yeah thanks Greg thanks a lot um yeah happy to be on and uh yeah maybe we'll we'll do it again sometime soon absolutely after one of these world titles that I (laughs) think I seem to make more of a priority than (laughs) than you did in terms of what's important in life. But I love it, mate. I appreciate, again, you coming on. For everybody listening, you can find all the show notes, the timestamps and everything else at bennettendurance.com forward slash media. Thank you. Thanks a lot for listening. If you enjoyed the show, your support would truly be appreciated. You can visit the Patreon page or you can subscribe with your podcast app of choice. Don't miss the next episode, so subscribe and be notified. For show notes, if you want to know more, please visit bennettendurance.com. I'm Phil Liggett, and on behalf of Greg Bennett, here's to the next time, and I hope you will join Greg again very soon.